This tutorial is a companion piece to the seventh devlog of my game, Our Counter. If you'd like to learn more, you can find the link to it in the description or on the card on the right. Now, onto the tutorial. Okay, so in this tutorial, I will be explaining the basic principle behind how I achieved this effect on the wings of my beetle enemy. Obviously, this effect has plenty of uses, and I invite you to experiment on it. Therefore, I have included a link to the finished project with the shader we will be creating in the description. I'd love to see what you've done with it. Let's start by vertex painting the meshes. I'm using Blender as my 3D software of choice, but I'm sure Max, Maya and more will have equivalent features. By toggling vertex selection on top left, I can go into edit mode, select vertices, go back into the vertex painting mode and fill the selected vertices with a solid color by pressing Shift K. Same for the cylinder. Since there are no vertices between its top and its bottom, it will create a smooth gradient from white to black. Now let's create a new Unity project. I will be using 2020.1.16 with the Universal Render Pipeline, but any version with a shader graph should work. I'll call it Vertex Color Tutorial and hit Create. Now this is the default scene. Let's remove the example assets. We won't need them. Then I will make two new folders, an imported folder in assets for our meshes and a VFX folder in materials for our graph. Then we can export our meshes into the imported folder. Remember to export them as a .fbx or another format that saves the vertex color, since formats like .obj will not do that. Afterwards, we can drag them into our scene. Let's rearrange the viewport so we can see how the shader looks as we edit it. Next, we will create a PBR graph. An analog graph will work just as well depending on what you're going for. I'm calling it Vertex Color Animation. If we right-click it and create a material, Unity will create one based on this shader. After that, drag the new material onto your models. Then, let's double-click our shader to open it and add our first node, the Vertex Color node, to check if everything imported properly. Plug it into the Albedo input on our master node and click Save Asset to see the results in the viewport. Everything seems to be working fine. Let's add a Triangle Wave node and connect it. We will be comparing our Vertex Color to it and the driving value will be time. It's flashing black and white. That's perfect. It's staying pitch black for a bit too long, which is a good sign that the values are going between minus one and one. So let's add a remap node and remap it to between zero and one. Let's save it. Now the color is changing constantly. Now for the actual comparison part. We want the distance between two values. Since we have access to four different channels within the vertex color, we just need one. So let's separate them and use the red channel. So first, let's subtract the wave output from our red channel. That's the result. It's filling up with black. Could be interesting if that's what you're going for. Not what we're going for though. So let's make this value absolute, or in other words, signless. That's better. The dark spot is bouncing between the start and the end. That's the gist of what we're going for. We can do more stuff with it though. Let's add a variable to change the animation speed. I'll make the default value 1 and multiply it with our driving variable, time. Let's slow it down in the editor. Much better. I would like to add a hard cutoff to the value. We can do that by adding a step node at the end. Let's change the edge value to something like 0 0.1. and plug the output into the alpha. Finally, let's change the alpha clip threshold to something like 0.5. Nice. Now there is a transparent spot traveling back and forth. Let's invert that. And that's it, we made it. If you want, again, feel free to experiment. This is how using a modular node, you can change the animation into one continuous movement. And here is how you can create a smoother back and forth movement using a sine wave instead of a triangle wave. Hope this was useful. If you'd like this project, the link is in the description. Feel free to let me know if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover in tutorials like this one. But for now, take care.